This is Twit. Jane Horvath, who's Apple's chief privacy officer, led a panel. I did not make it to this. It looks like not many people did. It looks kind of a small room here. Um, they, it was a panel on Tuesday to debate the state of consumer privacy. She uh, talked a little bit about encryption. Now, it turned out her timing was good because... <laughs> Yesterday, the uh, uh, U.S. Department of Justice and uh, William Barr and uh, the FBI said, Apple, you've got to help us uh, unencrypt this phone used by uh, a terrorist in the Pensacola uh, naval base shootings. And uh, Apple said, we can't, we won't, but we also can't. The debate is once again, just like it was after San Bernardino, raised about what the FBI should get access to. She said, our phones are relatively small. They get lost and stolen. If we're going to be able to rely on our health data and finance data on our devices, we need to make sure if you misplace that device, you're not losing your data. That's why we encrypt. Uh, building back doors into encryption, she said, is not the way we're going to solve those issues. Apple yep. does privacy by design, differential privacy, user randomization, on-device facial recognition stays on the phone. Data retrieval for Siri is minimized. She did, did uh, say that Apple scans for child sexual abuse content uploaded to iCloud. She wasn't very specific, but Apple later released, I found out uh, this morning, a press release saying they're doing, I think, essentially the same thing Facebook, Microsoft, and Amazon do. They're using hashes of known child pornography seeing if those hashes match hashes of uh, images on iCloud. That doesn't mean they're looking at your images. They're just making hashes and comparing them. I imagine if they match yep. at that point, they look at them. So that is as minimal uh, of an intrusion as possible. Um, but uh, she wasn't clear about that. And I think that that's concerned people when they said, yeah, oh yeah, we look, we're looking for child sexual abuse. And it made, made me wonder, well, what other illegal stuff are you looking for? You right. know, are you checking to see if I have pirated movies in there? Uh, are you checking to see if I've got any pictures of me with a bong? You know what? what? <laughs> so it can sell you bong-related accessories and Man, products. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but if they're just doing hashes, that's uh, something a lot of people yeah. want to do. What about this debate? I mean, I, we talked a little bit about it today on iOS Today. I did with uh, Micah. Steve Gibson has talked about it before. He Steve believes it's possible for Apple to have uh, it keep in escrow a backdoor key that it uh, uses only when presented with a lawful warrant. And that by doing so, they can keep it out of the hands of bad guys. I'm not sure I agree with that. What do you guys, what do you think? I think, I think you get into a situation where the people who worked on it eventually aren't working at Apple. <laughs> well, let's yeah. say, you know, I, and, 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 they, do, and they understand. No, them. it's a technological, like, I'll give you half the key. I'll keep half the key. We'll keep a third. Once you, once you, what we found is that we can't keep things secure. Like, you know, we can't keep things secret. If you have people start to work on it, Eventually, it it starts to unravel. You There's know, and, and we just haven't. What if anything. China comes to you and says, right. "Oh, I know you can decrypt the phone. I would like uh, every the contents of every Ouija's I've exactly. right now." Well, I mean, and once you open this, all the countries are going to want it, and the countries, the United States, may only use a warrant to to get this, and it may only happen five times a year. But China will do it all the time. Right. Egypt will do it all the time. Saudi Arabia will do it all the time. Right. Because once it's opened up, there will that's because if we, if we look at it, Apple follows the Why law. Why doesn't of what Bill it's Barr get this? Because he's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, like he's, no, he's not. He's not. He's, he's not. An idiot. Unfortunately, he's it's, not an idiot. And it's he's not just him. It's also the uh, the uh, GCHQ the in Britain. It's also Australia. I mean, there are a lot of well, governments saying we want we are, it's, Russia. It's it's illegal clear, to encrypt. It's, it's it's New Zealand and Australia, which are both part of the Five Eyes. Of the Five Eyes, they are. That's the soft point in the wall. So the reason that what's happening in Australia and New Zealand is coming out of the United States. Let's just be clear of that. that we're, know, we've initiated. We're manipulating that process, yeah. and those those legislatures in Australia and New Zealand are being manipulated by our by our intelligence because our intelligence wants in to those things. And the easiest place to go is somewhere where people aren't as worried about it and aren't as you know don't have the same concerns that and we maybe have trust about government a little and bit trust more. government more, which they shouldn't. And um, and so the thing is, is that they, so I think that the, the problem is, is that, you know, they, again, they want to have absolute access to all of our information at any point in time. I mean, that's what every government agency wants because their job is to keep us safe and they just want to be safe, you know, and, you know, any, you know, and, and the, the bottom line is, is a guy at Bill Barr's age isn't going to really understand what the issues are. He, he probably barely knows how to use email. So, 
So the thing is, I'm not kidding. I mean, I work with some of these guys. I mean, they don't really do that. And so, you know, the, the you know, understanding all the n- nuances of what this looks like is outside of their, you know, historical capacity, you know. And so should we worry, though, that he will convince Congress and that Congress will act and that this will become a law? I mean, I think they're going to have a hard time in the current Supreme Court structure to doing that. It's one of the advantages of the direction of the Supreme Court, regardless of what you feel like the rest of it. Um, the one of the things is this Supreme Court is probably not going to allow that to go. They're through. conservative enough. This, that they're, they're not going to allow. They're they're, they're probably it would be un, it would all come down to Roberts, and I don't think Roberts would allow this to go through. So I think that they're, they're, they're and I think that the reason that we haven't gotten to a point where the FBI is willing to take it to court is because I think they know what I just said, <laughs> which is if they <laughs> if they if they take it to court and they lose, they lose it forever. You know, like yeah. they you know they lose it until the Supreme Court changes, and they, what they're trying to do is apply public pressure on Apple to do this because they have lots of cases that they're doing this with. And Renee's got a great video that he did yes today, yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yesterday. Yeah. So that you should watch if you're, if you're interested in this. Is this thing. vector Renee? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's great, great video. Um, and the thing is, is that they have lots and lots of these cases. They're using the ones that pull at our heartstrings so that they can try to get public support for it because they can't get legal support for it. You know, after SOPA and all these other, you know, uh, I don't think Congress really wants to deal with it. They don't want to deal with it in election year. You know, like they're not going to, you know, they're not going to, no one, no one in Congress wants to touch this, this issue in an election year. Um, you know, and, and I think that they know that the courts aren't on their side. So the FBI is going to try to make this is, Apple look bad. Renee, this is different from what they were asking though, in the San Bernardino case, you covered that in, in great depth. It's, it's different in language, if not in intent. Like, so with the San Bernardino, so, to back up just a little bit, Apple's put out a statement. I put a copy of it up on Twitter. It's very long. It is incredibly precisely worded. And one of the things Apple does really well is they put it in very plain language. Um, and they describe one of the things that Bill Barr said that made me doubt his credibility entirely was that Apple had provided nothing substantial or substantive in terms of help for the FBI. And it, the, the problem is, like, you can get away with that in political discussions because people have a lot of feelings about politics, but technology isn't anywhere nearly as pliable. And Apple provided them with the iCloud backup, they provided them with the metadata, all of the things that Apple typically does for every request. And there is a wealth of information. But what's interesting in Apple's disclosure was that the FBI, very similar to San Bernardino, waited a long time. I think they said they waited a month to ask them for one of the phones, didn't even tell them there was a second phone at first. And they sort of botched the normal procedure along the way. And one of the things that they seem to do, one of their recourses is when they botch the basic procedure of gathering evidence, they start complaining very publicly that Apple won't let them into the <laughs> phone after, like the San Bernardino, they actually changed the iCloud password and locked themselves out and then complained bitterly about Apple not helping them for a month. Uh, so yeah. this, oh, and, they, and they didn't find anything either in the San Bernardino. One. No, they're not well, find all right. So let me argue on the other side, just a little bit of devil's advocate. I, I, you can understand why the FBI would want to get what's on these phones. There might be information about how the guy was radicalized. There might be information about accomplices. There might be information. They said they want his WhatsApp and well, Telegram. I well, think they whatever. Said. There, there might. Yeah. There's information. It's completely conceivable on that phone that would help protect us from future attacks. So I, I, I mean, I think law enforcement. I'm not going to speak for William Barr, but I think law enforcement, the guys on the ground, have a very legitimate interest in protecting us and saying, look, there's information on this phone that would help make us safer. Why shouldn't we ask Apple for it? I think the 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 problem is that the the FBI and you know the government they're asking the corporations or the companies that built these to to do the hacking. But they don't need them to do that, to, to unlock one individual phone. There's lots of hackers out there that can figure that kind of thing well, out. That's that what can happened dig to San Bernardino, that. right? They went to sell Right. So, yeah. so to ask a corporation to completely change, you know, their, the, what they do to protect all of our privacy in order to create one master key that unlocks all iPhones instead of just finding one person who can just hack it, I, I think that the you know, before there was a such thing as smartphones, they, you know, the FBI, they would go out and they would, you know, set up their little microphones and they would track people and they would, you know, like track their pagers do. and things like that. There's yeah, like, there were ways that, that they were. They still have that capability. Yeah, but, yeah. They've right, never but, had. But, they, so they, now, they, like, why, why are corporations like Apple having yeah. to shoulder the responsibility of hacking into the, these people's well, what's changed co- content is, instead of. Apple has given us technologies that can be fully encrypted. And it's not just the iPhone, it's things like Signal or WhatsApp. 
And so law enforcement is saying, but wait a minute, we used to be able to wiretap everything with a court order. Now we're going, they're using the phrase going dark. We can't listen to everything. And that makes it, us less safe. So they couldn't listen to everything before. They, they, got, they, they were getting, let's just say that they were getting about 2% of the communication before. Now they're getting about 90% of the conversation. And what they want is that last 10. Yeah, that's what you Phil know, like, Zimmerman, be, the creator of PGP, told me when I interviewed him on Triangulation. He said, they've got a wide screen, yeah. 8K view of the world. They're just a few dark pixels. <laughs> it's a, it's and like they don't pixel, want yeah. any dead pixels. It's it's stunning. Like I, you know, we, you know, what, what there's what cameras these, everywhere. You know, it's it. There's well, not only that, the metadata, the metadata, traffic, the metadata, metadata. So the metadata of yeah. knowing everybody that you talk to, everything, every what phones were near each other at the same time. You know, like these are all things that that they're they're able to grab onto right now, and they're able to get an enormous amount of data. And we as Americans make these choices all the time. We decided in New York that stop and frisk is not appropriate, even yeah. though it was very effective. Very, if you want to drop crime in New York, stop and frisk. You know, but it stomp it stomps on people's personal rights. You know, and and it became a thing that we decided, at least New Yorkers decided, wasn't going to be appropriate. San Francisco decided that even though facial recognition will make us safer, we don't want to do it. You know, and so people, you know, we're gonna we're gonna limit our safety based That's a good on point. our we freedom. We make that calculation all the time, right? And 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 we, and what we do by opening this up in the United States is we put every dissident every individual um, in every country at risk. Like it's not just Americans, it puts the world at risk because as soon as they open this door, every country will require it. And Apple follows the laws of the local country. You know, so as soon as they, as soon as they break this down, it is, it, it's the, the, the reason that I get upset about it is, is that it's one of the few things that I see as just an incredibly destructive, like this is a, you know, this is playing around with visual material. It also feels like it's futile because even if you could get Apple to do it, then a bad guy could use Signal. There's well-known crypto out there, uh, or they could roll their own that you just that you wouldn't be. Well, there yeah. will always be a way for bad guys to communicate privately. And the right? other issue that I think is really critical is that this is like the first step in what's happening in, in this huge digital transition. Uh, and we've talked about this before, but my phone has basically become my external cybernetics. It knows more about me than I than I can remember at this point, and I put everything in this little crypto brick because I, I assume a certain level of security. And this is just going to continue. It's it's art, people are going to have stuff stored in artificial limbs. They're going to have stuff stored in <laughs> um, like uh, or even Elon Musk is making brain interactions. Stephen Hawking is what work. Stephen Hawking, Jeff Hawking's working on dementia. There's all these different. Um, interfaces and once the cybernetics gets more and more internalized the same laws and and standards that we set now is going to govern that and if the idea of a backdoor into your phone is is scary the idea of a backdoor into your brain interactions is going to be doubly scary we don't just take every baby's dna at birth for a reason and we've got to just as people decide what what is inbounds and what is out of bounds and i don't think technology is going to get any less invasive so we have to make sure that the legal rights we have for that technology become more and more protective here is apple's the last paragraph of Apple's statement. We've always maintained there is no such thing as a backdoor just for the good guys. Backdoors can also be exploited by those who threaten our national security and the data security of our customers. Today, law enforcement has access to more data than ever before in history. So Americans do not have to choose between weakening encryption and solving investigations. We feel strongly that encryption is vital to protecting our country and our users' data. You have to say right on that's exactly the right it's so well written that's yes. exactly the right statement and i hope it resonates with members of congress other lawmakers i think it, we've probably lost william barr and the gchq but i hope it resonates with others yeah. you know and the other problem of course is well, the dissidents may not just be in china russia and turkey they may also end up being in the united states oh, absolutely and, 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 and we want to protect the right to uh to political dissent everywhere and the, and the thing that's important is for us to be as citizens this is a democracy <laughs> still uh so far um that uh that it's important for us to be ready that when we see someone actually getting close to the gate on this is that we all rise up and let them know it's not okay i mean this has killed other things most you know politicians are relatively you know on a short leash um and we can pull on that leash pretty hard as as citizens and this comes down to mm -hmm writing your congressman, marching, whatever. I mean, this is something that you need to pay attention to because this is not something, you know, it's not, the issue is it's not that important to the most representatives. So if they get a lot of heat for it, they're just going to walk away. I'm also it. going to point out that government and law enforcement and the people lobbying for this will always use, there's 
right now. Yeah, two things. Extremes. Two things, terrorism and child pornography. They will always yeah. use the most scary, the most, you know, strongest terms for illegality. Because who would disagree? We've got to fight those things. But we would like waterboard people. We would do the most horrendous thing. Like they always say also, what if it was your family member and we were trying to save yeah. like I would do anything. I would I would there would be no law. But that's, there's, and that's there's, why we need these protections. There's nothing in the law that says, anything. well, this would only be used for child pornography and terrorism. Yeah. Right. It could be used for anything. And so while they're going to use that to to kind of push these things through, it isn't really what it's about. We were yeah. promised. We were promised when we gave our social security numbers when we when we created social security. Yeah, those we are promised identification. The one thing we're not going to do with it is <laughs> is is collect taxes. Yeah, they don't even call it a social security number anymore. They call it your tax ID number. <laughs> like this is what happens. You know, like is it? And we're also we start not off very with, consistent of we in what we that. call. We're not very consistent in what we label terrorism, and it would be very and it can it can be very easily abused in order to get into things that That's they right. want to get into. That's right. Ah, oh, you guys are so good. I tried to argue the other side. I tried. <laughs> you need to, Leo. That's your, that's your job. That's my job.